Even though, you know, the current chat thing's not really a problem, but, you know, why not? Alrighty, guys. Um, here on Catalina, we've got a gold level game, and I'm going to introduce these players in the bottom right ish side corner of the map. We have the one only ish Mike, a Zerg player. His opponent today on the top left hand corner of the map, playing as the orange Protoss player, we've got Dream Slayer, part of the 2G4U. 2G4U clan. I don't know. I don't know if that's a real clan, guys. Um, Overlord straight out across the map, trying to find his opponent. Um, blindly aiming in this three-player map and uh, getting lucky with, with finding his opponent there. Um, if you're wondering why there's party hacks, guys, it's because StarCraft turn four. We're having a we're having a bit of a party here, pro party, drone party, SCV party. There ain't no party like an SCV party, that's for sure. Dream Slayer is uh, doing what looks like a gateway expand. If you were going to see a forge uh, fast expand, his pylon would be down here um, on the low ground. So we will. Uh, we will be expecting a forge fast expand here, which against a Zerg opponent, nice and safe, good good idea to do. I prefer gateway expands myself, but we'll have to see. Um, spawning pool still not going down here, so nothing too ridiculously cheesy coming out of the Zerg. We'll see if it is just a standard 14 pool. We'll see if he goes hatch first. Um, right now, guys, we've got one gateway in production, so I was completely wrong about uh, what I said. Uh, wait, no, I was right. I, I don't know, I got all confused. Uh, what I meant to say was he's building his pylon back at home, so it is going to be a gateway expand. Instead, I said building his pylon is going to be a forge fast expand, which is... Look, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. We're about we're four and a half hours into the stream, so uh, excuse my madness. Um, okay, spawning pool has gone down. I didn't actually see the timing of it, but there is no expansion yet from the Zerg, which is interesting to me because um, the pool was kind of late. And here he goes down to expand as his pool finishes up. Mm, interesting. Um, Protoss player wants to expand, and guess what? The drone says denied. What a pain. What a pain. Apocalypse says it was a 13 pool. Alright, uh, there we go. The expansion does go down. The gateway is up, but uh, no Cybernetics pool yet. So this is kind of a weird build coming out of Dream Slayer. Uh, I, I I don't know, man. I don't know about this build because it seems a little bit. What's going on here? Holy shit! Okay. Um, the cybernetics core is so late, and there's a zealot on the way. Like this is just strange. Um, normally normally you'll get your uh, your gateway, cybernetics core, then you expand. You don't go gateway expand cybernetics core. That's uh. Well, we hope Dream Slayer's got something in mind, though. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. He does want to place the Cybernex Core. There he goes. He's placing that on the high ground as well, so he's not going to have a wall against his opponent. Um, which is pretty risky, especially when this pool was so early, but so far just drones being produced and no lings. Um, which is a shame. I would like to see some lings. I don't know about you guys. We do have a queen on the way, the first queen on the way. He's going to start building the second queen at the natural. Queens are cool, guys. I, I said this earlier tonight when I was uh, playing random that... Queens are probably my favourite unit in the whole of StarCraft, and I, I'm not exactly sure why that is. Dream Slayer getting himself supply blocked here as well, a little bit unfortunate, but he's going to be okay. He's building two Zealots out of his first gateway. Um, he's up to some shenanigans here, I think. I, I would have loved to see him spend the money on those two Zealots, like maybe he can have one Zealot to stand in the wall, but it would have been good to see him get a wall up with like maybe two more gateways. Something like that. Now he's got two Zealots. There's not a whole lot he can get done with two Zealots, but he's going to move across the map and try and put on a little bit of harassment. We will have to wait and see how our Zerg player reacts with this. Reacts to this. Uh, still no Zealots. Uh, we've got four Zealots on the production tab now for our Zerg. Four, uh, four Zerglings on the production tab. Uh, Robo coming down for Dream Slayer. Uh, a couple Spines going down for our Zerg player. So he's going to be just fine against these Zealots. Basically rendering these Zealots useless. Which is really, really good for the Zerg player. Um, mm, I, I think the Zerg player currently is, is ahead of his opponent. The income tab says it's 30 harvesters to 24, though, favoring the Protoss player. So maybe I'm wrong. Uh, we do see a bailing nest come down now. See, this is a. 
this is interesting to me because Ishmaq seems to be doing, he's got a plan, right? He's got some sort of plan. He's doing these things. He's getting a bailing nest, but he doesn't even know right now that his opponent hasn't walled. He doesn't need a bailing nest. He could get in there and do a ton of damage with his links. Um, if he just built links instead of trying to tech um, to something that he, he you know, bailings aren't going to help him in this, this situation. Um, they're going to be great against Zealots, but uh, he, he should have at least tried to poke in the front with Lings. He should have an Overlord in position so that he could see the front of this base and realize that there's no wall. Because right now, if we check out his vision, he doesn't know. He doesn't know there's no wall. Uh, double Forge going down here from Dream Slayer in a really strange positioning. Um, so that's somewhat of a wall. That's okay. The Zerg player taking a third base here. Um, nice work, Zergi. Well done. Nice macro from Zerg, but he does need to produce more, more probes. He's only got 21. And, uh, more, sorry, more drones. He really, really, really needs to work on his probe production because right now that's the thing keeping him back. He doesn't have anywhere near enough, um, and it's keeping his economy very low. And uh, we're seeing that he's, he's slipping further and further behind right now because of that. Um, Terran player, like, I mean, not Terran, sorry, the Protoss player is actually almost double. The, the the harvest account of his opponent right now and you just really really don't want that as a zerg because you need that economy Emmerwind says banes are a good unit if there's no sentries and uh, I, I do agree with that I just think that it would have been better for him to use to, to, to just build some zealots and go and poke around first before deciding to use banelings because he basically blindly went banelings for oh god for something that aren't that helpful Look at this, guys. This is the worst. Look at that. Oh, no. I'm stuck. I would have probably just built a war prism and left that there. Oh, he's actually... No, he's actually boxed his whole robo in. That is some of the worst robo placement I've ever seen in the world, guys. Um, he's now supply blocked himself by destroying that pollen as well. Um, he, he, he's going to be fine, though. Look, that's not a, that's not a drama. That's, it's fine. Uh, DT Shrine out. We... Don't have any detection here for our um, for our Zerg player yet. He can of course morph overseers, but he doesn't have any spores. Um, other DTs gonna be. Well, where are we gonna see these DTs? I'm intrigued by this DT shrine because it's been here for about 20 years, and uh, since then not a single DT has been morphed in. Now I would love to see some DTs moving across the map right now, um, because if he waits too long, spore crawlers will be made, and they are made. Has this player seen the DT Shrine? Someone's listening to the stream. Hey Ishmark, don't listen to the stream, mate. You're ruining the fun for everybody. It's alright though, guys. We're just going to have to deal with that. Unless this is just the random time that he decides to put down his spore crawlers. But I doubt it. Alright, so these Ling's moving across the map. He does have speed. Um, but right now, the Protoss player's army is quite large. These links are... Uh, these links are not going to be able to defeat this army. Um, the DT is now moving across the map a little bit, which is good. Spores are, spores are most likely due to a no-scout, says Amelwind. If you say so. Alright, the Ling's trying to cancel off on the third. Uh, there's no force fields available, and it doesn't matter. The Protoss army, too scary. Ling's going home with the tails between their legs. Still no Banelings morphed, Amorwind. Starting to think this Baneling nest was... No good. Alright, these two DTs are going to come in here, and they're going to get shut down pretty hard. Uh, well done, Spore Crawler. Nice, nice work. No Spore Crawler at this third base. So you know what? Maybe he wasn't listening... To the stream, so I'm sorry, Amelwind. Uh, not Amelwind. I'm sorry, Ishmike. If you aren't listening to the stream, then obviously it morphs in pretty quickly, though, and he does deal with that just fine. He also kills off uh, the observer, which is a nice little move. A few bailings being created, a bunch of roaches, and a few lings here. Ishmike a little bit behind his opponent's supply, but I think his army supply is actually possibly ahead of his opponent right now. Um because uh, there's 47 harvesters versus 32 harvesters from Ishmaq. These guys are actually even in supply now, and I think in this situation, in this battle now, with these roaches, banes, lings, I think Ishmaq can uh, can kill off this third. Um, there's going to be a photon charge available, but still no force fields. These banelings can do a ton of damage. Ishmaq very scared to poke in there. 
Um, he's setting up a bit of a concave out here. And um, the longer he waits, the stronger this army gets from Dream Slayer. And now it's a lot bulkier, a lot more meat to it. Um, so it's okay. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. The, the Harvest account getting larger now for our Zerg player. And he's starting to uh, look a bit stronger, don't you? Bane's nice pullback of the Bane. Oh, no, that was a Bane. Oh, well. Uh, this Queen doing a wonderful creep spread job. Look at this creep spread of our uh, Gold League player Ishmike here. He is, man, this creep spread is excellent. He's also taking a fourth base. He's doing a lot of great things. Um, his tech, though, his tech is, ooh, he's going to be switching it up. He's going to be switching up and going for the Spire. Um, uh, so what do we got here? He has nothing right now to, uh, to shoot air, but the Zerg, the, the Pro's player is sticking with that Robo, so that's okay. Decent engagement here from the Zerg. Unfortunately, though, there's just too many Protoss units. The Bailing sort of... Uh, didn't get that many big hits off either. Like the Zerg player set a nice trap, but he just didn't have enough units to uh, to engage properly. The Protoss player lost almost nothing there, and Ishmaq losing a ton of stuff. I think Ishmaq probably needs maybe uh, maybe some Hydra to do some more DPS while his Roaches tank. Um, but he has done this Muta switch, and he needs he needs this Muta switch to do a heap of damage. There's no cannons in the mineral lines from the Protoss player. Um, but it could be too little too late right now because the Protoss player has decided now is the time I'm moving across the map and uh, Immortals, Sentries, no, Immortals, Stalkers, Time Warp goes down. The Immortals sitting at the back not doing a whole lot of damage but even so this is looking pretty bad for Ishmark who's now down half the supply of his opponent, all his forces are being defeated. The Immortals are actually doing a shitload of damage now sitting at the back. Six kills, seven kills, eight kills. Um, and unfortunately, Ishmike, I don't think he's going to be able to come back from this. He can't reinforce his army quickly enough. Protoss player building more and more Immortals. Oh my god, I've never seen so many Immortals in my life. I mean, that's, a, that's a slight exaggeration, but that is a lot of Immortals uh, being produced from those Robos. And now, Protoss player waltzes his way through. 50 supply difference right now. Uh, Roaches being built. Ling's being built, but this positioning from Dream Slayer pretty decent as well. No surround can be had. Immortals sitting in the middle doing a ton of damage. I'm a wind in chat saying that uh, Ishmaq lost this game due to lack of droning, and I, I, I do agree, he, he, his economy was so bad.